Hello, and welcome to the Masters of Public Health Program informational presentation for the fall 2023 cohort. In this presentation, I will be covering career opportunities that students can expect when they graduate with an MPH, program features of the MPH program, the curriculum and requirements of the program, admissions requirements, the application process, and more. We like to always start with a definition of what public health is. Public health promotes, protects, and maintains the health of people and the communities where they live, learn, work, and play. This is important as many applicants are a little confused about the difference between public health and clinical health. And so we like to start the presentation being very clear. If you're interested in pre prevention and you're interested in working with groups of people and structures to help many people become healthy and prevent disease and injury, then public health is for you. Public health practitioners focus on prevention of disease and injury to assure the conditions in which people can be healthy. What we know about career opportunities uh, with an MPH degree is that they are only expected to grow. We work very closely with the California Department of Public Health and other local health departments and agencies, and there is a big shortage of uh, MPH trained uh, public health practitioners. The other thing is that growth opportunities in a, a variety of different areas will also expand. These include things like disaster preparedness, uh, control of infectious disease, uh, prevention of chronic disease, et cetera. Again, as I mentioned in the previous um, slide, um, these are non-clinical health focus areas in terms of career opportunities and focusing on prevention for the aggregate. As you can see from this word cloud on the screen, the other thing about public health is that there's a wide variety of specialty areas that a person can focus on with their MPH degree. Um, our MPH degree focuses on health promotion, policy, and leadership, but that can be applied to any area in the field of public health. So why should you choose Sac State's MPH program? First of all, we are uniquely positioned in the capital region. We are less than five miles away from the uh, capital in Sacramento. And this positions us very well to have very close both um, uh, proximal relationships with leadership, but also um, uh, connections, personal connections with uh, uh, leaders in the capital region. In addition to uh, leadership at the state level, uh, because it is the capital of California, many of the statewide organizations uh, also are in the capital region. I already mentioned we have strong connections with area community organizations, local public health departments, and of course, California Department of Public Health and other state organizations. Highly qualified faculty, we invite you to look at the bios of our faculty on our Department of Public Health Sac State website. We also use a cohort design for our program, which uh, increases the connection between students. We use a practice-based approach in the program, which means we aren't just focused on whether or not you understand the theory of the work, but also that you know how to put it into practice. And we also have a well-respected alumni network. Specific design features of the MPH program are that it is a two-year program or 42 units. Specifically, it is a five-semester program, which consists of fall, spring, summer, fall, and spring. The 42 units in our program is not unique to our program. This is very standard for all MPH programs. Um, and you'll find that if you, if you research other programs. We use a lockstep cohort design, which means that you come in as a cohort and you complete all of your classes with your cohort. Again, we feel that this uh, uh, encourages connection, solidarity, support, and things that are really important during this uh, uh, time period. You will take no more than three courses per term and only two in the summer. 
Again, this is also very important so that you can pace yourself through the program and really absorb the material. The program is taught in a hybrid course delivery format, which means that 50% of it is taught asynchronously online and the other 50% is taught in person. We offer a working professional schedule, which means we teach courses that start um, one or two days a week after uh, 5.30 in the evening. We do have an occasional weekends um, uh, that are attached to our residency requirement, um, as well as other events and maybe even some classes uh, occasionally, but this is an occasional thing. We do also have a residency program and this residency and program um, consists of three different residencies. These are intensive residencies over uh, a day or two. And the focus of our residencies I'll get to in a second. Specifically, this MPH degree has a concentration in health promotion, policy, and leadership. Health promotion is a specific area of public health and really allows a professional to have the ability to see a problem, identify a problem, and know what to do about it, how to create a program, how to engage the community, how to create uh, um, uh, relationships, a community advisory board, all of those things. The art of health promotion is multi-sectorial. We also have a focus within this concentration on policy because it is really important to us that our MPH graduates deeply understand how to read, interpret, write, and implement policy. And then the last component is leadership. One of the things that we heard from our constituents when we were developing this program is that we need good leaders at the MPH level. And so we have quite a few classes that focus on management, leadership, um, skills, as well as all of our intensive residencies also focus on the development of leadership. Specifically looking at the course requirements or what you'll actually take, your required courses consist of an MPH 100, which is a course that only is required if you have do not uh, enter the MPH program with a, um, a bachelor's degree in public health or related field. This particular class is uh, offered to you this summer before you start your MPH program and is a completely asynchronous course taught via a learning platform called Canvas. Uh, there is a fee associated with this course, which is $200. And again, that is only a course that is required for students that do not have a bachelor's degree in public health or health science. Other specific core course, uh, courses that you will take in your program consist of 202, which is your ecological determinants of human health. This is your ecology or environmental health class. 203, public health management and leadership. 204, health system structures and policies. Understanding health systems is really important in public health um, and becoming even more vital uh, to assure that we have graduates that understand how all systems work together to affect the health of the community. And then you'll have a whole year um, or two semesters of health research methods and analysis, 207 A and B. And this is where we combine epidemiology, biostatistics, and research methods. And then lastly, 224 is your program planning and evaluation class. And this is something you will take um, closer to the end of your degree. Concentration courses include 220, which is your health policy analysis class, also a writing intensive class. 221, which is strategies for community engagement, because as I mentioned earlier, um, it is really important to have good skill set on how to engage the community, assess community readiness for change, all of those things. 201 is your theory class. 222 is methods of health promotion. 223 is a leadership and public health practice class. And then 225 is a special topics in public health seminar, which allows us to study a variety of topics that are happening currently in society. Your culminating courses consist of your public health practicum, which is 120 hours worth of work, and your public health capstone, which is a project-based capstone that you will do your last semester in the program. The residency program, as I mentioned earlier, there are three residencies, intensive residencies. One will occur in August before the program begins. 
The other occurs in May or June, about midway through the program. And then your last residency is at the end of the program. The residency focus is uh, threefold. One, it aims to strengthen connection between MPH students and between students and MPH faculty. To build a learning community where students in the cohort can learn from and support each other as they progress through disease, sorry, degree. And the last one is to advance uh, emotional intelligence leadership skills in critical areas, which include how you relate to others, your influence, how you advocate, inquiry, team and group skills, active listening and self-awareness. We also have a community connections program and these uh, provides opportunities for MPH students to connect with public health practitioners and community public health partners um, external to the university. So it aims to expand student knowledge and breadth of the field of public health. It consists essentially of two different things, speakers events, as well as community connection volunteer opportunities. Other components that are part of the MPH program is that we do offer two graduate assistantships every year. As a part of the MPH uh, program, you also will be giving a student membership to the American Public Health Association. We have travel support and funding for professional development. And we also have a student advisory council, which consists of all students in the MPH program and then specific MPH students that have been elected to leadership. The Student Advisory Council helps to inform faculty when uh, student-focused um, decisions need to be made. Admissions requirements. The minimum requirements for admission is a bachelor's degree from an accredited university. The accredited university is usually referring to a uh, accrediting body over the entire university a 3.0 GPA from your last degree completed. However, we will accept applications with uh, a 2.75 and above. In some instances, even a 2.5. We do also prefer that you have some type of professional work experience. Specifically, public health work experience is the most preferred. In order to complete an application, you will have to fill out a Cal State Apply application. You will also need to complete an MPH supplemental application and make sure that you provide references. This is specifically the names and contact information of at least two people that we can call in the event that we want additional clarification about your qualifications and readiness for graduate study. Reference letters are not required. Reference forms are not required. All that we need is the name and contact information written on the MPH supplemental application. Transcripts from all colleges and universities that are not Sac State. This includes all your junior college work, even if you took one class at a junior college. All of that needs to be sent. A personal essay, please refer to our College of Continuing Education website where it shows you the specific uh, prompts to complete for the personal essay, and then your updated resume. One thing I also wanna mention is the priority deadline has passed, which was December 1st of 2022. However, we are still taking applications up to May 1st and making decisions based on a uh, uh, space available. Program costs are $650 per unit, or $27,300 for the entire program. This excludes textbooks. This is very common and a very uh, common price across your CSU-based MPH programs. As I mentioned earlier, that introductory course, should you need it, would be $200. And again, that is only for students that do not have a bachelor's degree in public health or related field. There is a $50 MPH application fee and a $70 Cal State apply fee when you apply. The MPH program is taught through the College of Continuing Ed. And in such, we do have a specific person in the College of Continuing Ed to help students with uh, financial aid. Students in the MPH program are eligible for federal-based financial aid programs. Most of the time, this consists of graduate student loans, and the specific individual and community in, in the College of Continuing Education that you can talk to 
is Veronica Nava Workman. And you can see here her phone number as well as email. So how do you apply? Go to the College of Continuing Ed Education webpage and click the How to Apply button. Submit your Cal State application and attach all supplemental documents that I spoke about in the previous slide in quad four of the application. Be sure to send those transcripts and send them early. Especially if you have foreign and international documents, I would suggest you submit them even a month earlier than the normal deadline. If you want any more information about the MPH that isn't on the College of Continuing Ed website or any additional information about the application process, you can also go to the Office of Grad Studies website. If you have any questions, we welcome you to uh, uh, email Susie Bird or Jessica Morrison. You will find their contact information on the College of Continuing Ed Masters of Public Health website. They are very responsive. You can also submit them in the um, MPH inquiry uh, question link. That's also on the College of Continuing Ed website. And lastly, I just wanna thank you for your interest in the MPH program at Sac State. We are really excited about the work that we're doing and look forward to seeing you in the future.